Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are in, we're in Alabama. We're, I don't even know what city we're in. Fairhope. Fairhope. We're in Fairhope, Alabama. It's a nice, cool summer day today. It's actually <laughs> almost the end of September. Standing next to me is Mary. She's the new owner of this beautiful American coop behind us. And what I wanted to do in this video is capture us just doing a walk around. Um, they have some questions about the coop. And of course, on video, I want to talk about some of the newest features about this coop and some other things that we did do that's extra. But also, I really want to hopefully remember to point out what comes standards? I know a lot of times we get questions, what's standard, what's not, and I get it, it's confusing. We're trying to do the best we can on the video um, and on our website to show what's standard, what's not, so I'm gonna try to talk about that. So first, Mary, thank you. Thank you, Matt, and Sean, and Adam. Y'all have done a beautiful job. Thank you, you beautiful. are more than welcome. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around, and again, you've already asked some great questions. If you wanna try to repeat those questions, I'll try to hopefully give the same answer, but any questions you have at all, definitely fire away. Okay. Now, um, so again, like I was saying, this is what I would call our standard American coupe. And what that means is, and when I say coupe, there's two parts to a chick coupe. There's the run, and then there's the hen house. Now, the overall footprint of your coupe is six foot wide, 12 foot long, and your back hen house is six foot wide, four feet deep, and it's actually four foot tall from the bottom of the hen house to the top of this wall and then goes up at a peak and then speaking of height your walls are six foot from ground to here and then goes up to about seven and a half foot right there now i want to point that out right away because this is another textbook example um mary you already have chickens yes i do how, how many chickens do you have i have seven you have seven, seven girls mm -hmm. seven girls and you have a coop already i do we showed up yesterday you kind of walked out like this i was having definitely having back issues hip issues because this coop that we had that my husband and i put together we had to bend over and do the cleaning and doing you know most of the maintenance and putting the food and the water in and yes i've been having hip issues so hopefully you're gonna <laughs> love, love this no. yes yeah, so you're gonna love and appreciate being able to walk yep. into your run area that's how it should be without bending over so now another thing that i want to point out right away is standard they do not come painted it's completely up to you how you want to finish this you can paint it oil it uh, Thompson water seal, which is like a liquid wax. You can stain it. All you're trying to do is prevent water from getting into the wood. Now you will notice a lot of this has a pink hue and right there, right there is textbook proof. D fur, Douglas fur. This is high quality lumber, uh, premium lumber. We are very, very particular, not just about the look of our coop um, and how well we build it and the function, but the materials we use. There's so much to that. Also, another thing I want to point out, everything is pocket screwed and glued. And one of the biggest reasons why we like um, pocket screwing them is because your screws are all going cross grain. So you have very strong joinery. Also, because it's glued isn't just to make that joint stronger. It's actually to seal the end grain to keep from capillary action or the water from wicking. Um, also, come standard is the black PVC coated half inch hardware cloth. This stuff is awesome. It should in theory last forever. It's black because it absorbs the light. So if you step back, think of it like the screen on your windows. You see right through it. When you're looking in here and your girls are in here, you're going to be able to see them very easily. Also, um, I guess while we're out front here, we'll just go from here and inside. So right here, also standard is what we call the run door. Now, if you order an American Coupe from us, you can pick, do I want my run door here or do you want it on the side? We do have to know that because there are different widths, but the height is the same. Now, um, I prefer and I like it on the end and you can either put it here or there and when you do order an American Coupe from us, and let's say you're gonna assemble it, you guys get to put the screen on where you want so you can determine then where you have your door. Now Mary had was gracious enough to have us come down here from New York and put this together for her so her screen was already on. Uh, so she told us where she wants her run door and she told us where she wants her egg hutch. Did we get it right? Yes. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, right here is your run door. Here's your gate latch. Now. For extra security, I always recommend putting a carabiner through here or a padlock or a combination. Raccoons have pinkies and thumbs. We don't want them to climb up here and try to open it. It would be extremely challenging for them, but it is possible. But you add a carabiner there, you will not have to worry about that. 
Now, um, if you're you're gonna let your chickens free range, right? Yes. Awesome. So that. when you go to do that, what you can do is just simply open up your run door. There's a little hook right there. You don't need an eye bolt. You just hook it to the screen and you're done. Your girls can come and go as they please. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I love what you've done as far as picking out your location. Mm -hmm. So if we kind of pan around here, we definitely gotta get a good shot of this big. You said it was a live oak tree? Yes, live oak and the magnolia and then the sweet gum. Yeah, so this is perfect. Again, we're way down south in Alabama <laughs> and it gets hot here and I cannot emphasize it enough. You want to focus on what you can do to keep your girls cool. So many people get obsessed. How do I keep them warm in the winter? Stop worrying about that. Block off the wind chill, you're good. Keep them cool in the summertime. So here you have natural shade. They're almost in their natural environment. Remember, chickens are woodland creatures. This is just textbook perfect for them. And you did mention that you're gonna be able to let them come out mm -hmm. and free range. We're talking about adding some possible fencing, but they'll absolutely love it. They'll go in scratching the leaves. Um, and then if there is any aerial predators, you're giving them a very good chance to hide like they naturally would. Make sense? Yes, and I, we had to do some research through Matt to find out that this was the best with the mulch or the compost mm -hmm. versus sand. And so we were prepared for you to come. And I love that you did that. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little worried, but you guys textbook perfect. So I love what they did. So we uh, were just in another place in Alabama doing a custom coop. Mary came out, we chit chat a little bit and I told her, I said, so important to have the ground level and flat as possible. Um, for many reasons. One, we want to make sure your doors function. Now this will settle. So I, at that point, one thing I want to mention is um, as your coop settles, you're going to know if you got to make any adjustments based on if this doesn't shut perfectly or you start to see it pinching, mm -hmm. um, you can just make a, adjustments. Hopefully you won't have to too much, but I love that you had Cecil, the man. We yes, love that guy. Cecil! Cecil! <laughs> Everyone here loves him. Um, he came out with the same material that we use, that pH neutral pine mulch compost i believe he mm -hmm. called it and again this is just going to be so nice for your girls to be able to scratch in and as long as you don't overload the run area being that you're able to free range that's even better but you will not have to worry about ever cleaning out your run and then we did have a potential problem area in that our water runoff was right through here so we had a french drain which sean su suggested when he came to look at the site we put French drain here and then along the water line from the barn. So Absolutely. Should be pretty I'm glad you pointed pretty. that out because, again, when you guys are preparing your site, water can be your best friend, your worst enemy. And the whole idea is when it rains, water's going to come and we want it to go. We want it to keep on going. So what's going to happen here is, especially being right next to this building, you're going to get a lot of runoff mm -hmm. of this roof. It's going to hit right here. Water's going to want to take the path of least resistance. So I think it was a great recommendation. So. Um, and we can get a shot of it over there. We call it tiling, um, but basically it's a corrugated pipe that's about four inches. And when the water goes through the soil, it's going to hit the inside of that pipe, uh, path of least resistance, and run right to the lowest point. So I love what you guys have done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. I have the Bahama rock on top, too. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep yeah. making it so that the path of least resistance, the water can go right through it. So the other thing, while we're out here, I couldn't wait to kind of show this off. Um, you mentioned to me you have a lot of snakes yes and we talked a lot about <laughs> snakes and you know um the one thing i want to highly recommend and it doesn't matter if it's snakes or any other pests you don't want to give them a reason to have to be around your coop but also you don't want to give them easy access if they do come up to the coop so one of the things is for example if you stacked a bunch of rocks around here and gave them little hiding spaces you have a high probability of snakes hiding out in here so you don't ever want to do that but also what you had us do is add what we call now the snake guard mm -hmm. um, what we did sean just did a great job he went around he put in the regular predator apron that's the 16 gauge uh, pvc coated two inch by three inch predator apron and on top of that uh, he attached with the stainless steel staples the PVC coated black hardware cloth came out four foot. Um, I was making a joke that we have to come out four foot because that could be the average length of a snake that might try to slither up to here and we don't want them to go underneath it. But time is never on our side. Actually, I think you can get away with coming out two, two foot, but we didn't want to cut in half because we just happen to have four foot already. But actually looking at it, what do you guys think? I think it looks good. I like it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna give you great peace of mind. Yeah. So again, because you have you know cotton mouse, 
copperheads, they're not really going to want to go in your coop. It's your constrictor style snakes that will want to go in and eat the eggs. And the point I also want to make is the juvenile snakes that are small enough to fit through here, chickens will eat them. Um, but the ones large enough to eat your eggs cannot fit through here or obviously down through there. So you are going to be in good shape. No surprises when you come out to get your breakfast. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> and I guess also while we're out here, the other thing I want to point out, question we get all the time, what comes standard for roofing? This is it right here, Galvalum. We love this. This is probably our most popular color next to black that we do. And the reason why we make this standard is, well, one, we buy it in bulk and it makes it so much easier for us because it doesn't scratch easily like painted roof does. When people order painted roof, we have to be extra careful with handling it. Uh, but what I also like is this has a very high TSR, total solar reflectance. This is gonna really help keep your hen house cool by reflecting it. But you have, again, you've got this beautiful magnolia. We got a sweet gum right here. It's in a nice shady area. So this is just perfect. Um, so some other things, standard this is a brand new ladders what do you think it's beautiful good absolutely beautiful uh, one of the <laughs> reasons why we started making these was actually to help solve a problem with your special silkies that need wider <laughs> rungs or steps to get up in there and what i realized is we have so much scrap wood i hate scrap so we were able to burn up a lot of scrap and even though it is a little more material uh, i think it's well worth and customers have absolutely loved these new ladders so nice. again this is now standard also, can't say it enough, you can never have enough ventilation. One of the nicest parts about all our coops, especially the American Coop, is you have tons of ventilation. Um, you got these windows here that are polycarbonate. You can open them up. You have the protection back here with the half inch hardware cloth. And what we did, I think we finally uh, made a final decision. Mary, if you want to pull that okay. dowel, um, we are hiding our dowels. They'll pull straight out. Did I make it too tight for you? Maybe. Let's, there we go. We'll work on that, maybe a little <laughs> bit of wax. Anyways, um, put your dowel right up in that top hole. There we go. All right, and then especially down here in Alabama, you can pretty much leave these open year round. Um, but that's just an easy way to allow ventilation. And we have ventilation on all four sides, and I can't wait to show the new ventilation on the back side. So um, also, let's again look at all this headroom. Yeah. And this Wonderful. awesome. No bending. Yep. Um, <laughs> one thing we are going to do that. Um, uh, we're going to send to these guys is they are going to have the water bar put in and they have a water source right off to the outside that we are going to tie into a rain barrel that will have a float valve on it. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about gutters or anything like that, but you can have it top off with the float valve. And one of the things is this is obviously you get hurricanes here. Mm -hmm. And the original idea was to have the pump from your well feed the water bar directly mm -hmm. with a pressure gauge, which is a common practice, but if you lose power, mm -hmm. you're not going to have pressure for water. Mm -hmm. So great idea these guys came up with is let's hook that up to the rain barrel so you have redundancy uh, and protection to make sure you never run out of water. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then when you have your feeder, I'm not sure what you're doing now, but I always recommend, you know, I like a shepherd's hook underneath here and then it just hangs by the handle, but you can obviously hook up inside here. You got all this wood. You can do chin-ups on this thing. You can hang a swing in there if you want. Um, you can hang your feeder in here, but I definitely recommend hanging the feeder. That way the chickens don't roost on it and okay. defecate in the feed. Right here is your egg hutch. And this is where you're gonna gain access to get your eggs. And it's just that simple. You're gonna open this up, nesting material in here. Now, I, and I appreciate you're, you're gonna be using industrial hemp for your deep litter system. I do not recommend putting hemp okay. or pine shavings, any small particulate material inside for the nesting box because it's gonna make too big of a mess. Okay. One of the areas you gotta pay close attention to is you gotta keep it clean right here okay. because if material builds up right there, it won't shut just okay. like that. So keep an eye on that. I love to give them what they want naturally, and that is just long hay straw-like nesting material. Um, okay. Some other people use like coconut mats okay. and maybe some straw on top of that. Also, also uh, aspen bedding, which is okay. like aspen strains glued together, work really well. What about pine straw or not? I would not recommend pine straw. It probably would work. Um, I don't recommend it, but it. it not saying it couldn't work one of the biggest times when i get asked about pine straw is actually for bedding inside the uh, chicken coop and that you definitely wouldn't want to do because it it's so uh, so acidic okay but i have never talked to anyone that has used it at all so okay. i can't i don't want to say no but i wouldn't recommend it i think regular flat like hay material is ideal okay but it doesn't really take much what we're really trying to achieve is a nice 
dimly lit safe area for the girls to lay. Again, we're trying to encourage their instincts. Now, if you ever want to add more room, if they're fighting over a nest box, which they will do, <laughs> just pull this out. We want to reduce the stress. And most people actually pull out all their dividers. Also, if you have one that goes broody, you want her to raise some baby chicks for you. You got plenty of room in there for the okay. little feeder and waterer while she's raising them. So this, they don't have to have a divider. They that can, is correct. Okay, okay. That is correct. Yeah. A lot of people just fill that whole thing with nesting material. That's what I do. And they'll okay. all just pile in there. And when do you suggest my girls are about four months old? When should I, should I keep this blocked off? You know, that's a great question. I would think, now here's, this is an interesting point. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Their existing coop is maybe 7,500 yards away from us right now. And they are, so they're about 16 weeks, if I did the math right, four mm -hmm. times four. Um, so they're getting about another four weeks and get ready to lay, but they have learned that's home. Okay. So when you go to bring your chickens over here, which I would do at night, because it'd be easier to catch them, I would put them right on the roost bars in the hen house and wait for them to come down on their own. And they are going to have to learn this is home. So I would not let them free range because they won't come back here at night. They're going to keep trying to go back to that spot. Okay. While you're doing that, I would say maybe take some cardboard just to make sure they don't try to roost in there until about maybe another three or four weeks. Then remove that cardboard because hopefully by then they have learned this is their new home. They're going up and down, in, you know, coming down in the morning, going up at night as if they've always lived in here. And then they will naturally see this as a nice dimly lit area that feels safe to lay their eggs. Do you suggest the ceramic eggs in there or? If you have to, <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble here, but it is what it is. Yes, you have ceramic <laughs> eggs, you have wooden eggs, uh, golf balls. Those are supposed to be ways to train them to lay in there. Okay. I have never had to train a chicken to lay eggs in one of our egg hutches, and I believe it's just because it's built the way it should be. Okay. Not saying you don't have to, not saying you wouldn't have to, not saying you shouldn't. You can try it, but again, it's just, I, I've built these and had chickens hop in them in my shop and lay eggs in them. Okay. You know, it's just, there's just not much it's to it. It's home to them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so again, just make sure that stays nice and clear. And once that nesting material locks in, you won't have an issue anymore. And the other nice thing about these drop down doors here is if you do come out to get your eggs, a lot of egg hutches you'll see out there, the roofs lift up here. Mm. You will scare the crap out of your chickens. Oh. That's very stressful because they think, you know, you're an aerial predator. This is just a real easy way to uh, not startle them. Also, I love kids when they come running. One of the first places they go to after they climb up the ramp, they come right <laughs> over here. And it's just real easy for them to get eggs. So if you have any grandchildren um, that come over, what have I just love you. the way how easy that is. Thank you. It's supposed yeah. to be easy. Yeah. And again, I would add another carabiner right there okay. just to play it safe. Okay. Um, you don't have to have them here on these windows because, again, you have the half inch hardware cloth. So let's try this again. Okay. Pull that dowel ah. out. Yay! <laughs> Look at that. We'll go right into the top hole. It's hot. Look at that. Okay. We ready? Guys, we got new doors. We have new doors. And this is because I've been listening to everything our customers say. Always trying to be innovative. So I hope you guys like them. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, please uh, let us know what you think down below. One, you guys um, always have the best ideas and love suggestions. So what we've done is we've eliminated the lift off doors. Um, and the reason is one of the complaints was, well, where do I put the doors when they're off? I didn't know it was going to be that big of a deal, but apparently it is. So there's no more lift off. They're actually hinged right here. And number two is what about sideways rain now if you get some sideways rain it's not going to ruin anything especially you've got the high density inside and technically with industrial hemp you're supposed to mist it with moisture to help activate the absorbency i never have i don't think anyone ever has but the point is a little bit of sideways rain would never hurt you however what we've done is made it so these lift out and again we hid the dowels right there and same system if you want to pull those dowels right there and then put them right in the top hole. And I have them snug intentionally so they don't fall. There you go. No, they'll, they'll work their way in. What we've done is made it so they don't lift off, still have ventilation, still got that protection of the half inch hardware cloth. And what we also did is now we're protecting this and act as an awning, any sideways rain. And we decided not to use the ply continue to use the polycarbonate because you can technically never have enough daylight, okay. especially in the winter months um, for chickens to help with egg production. And I hope they look good. What do you guys think? 
Is there any special way to clean these? Clean the windows so the girls can see? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We like I, I, I never had that question. I don't know. I got to look it up. I imagine, you know, uh, Nan uses uh, thieves. Does that okay. sound right? Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be this organic yeah. hippie cleaner that you can use on everything. You can drink it if you want, put you to sleep. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I would say the one thing about polycarbonate, even though it is 400 times stronger than glass, what makes it stronger is it's very flexible. You cannot snap this stuff. It's what they make yeah. bulletproof glass out of. But I imagine it can scratch easier, so I would just be careful what kind of cloth you use okay. and if there is any reaction. So I will look. That's a great question. I'll have to look into that. Believe it or not, I've never been asked that. <laughs> but I would say mild dish detergent, a couple okay. drops in a bucket and a cloth. If you have to, okay. Or experiment. Let me know. So now here's the other thing. We got our back doors, so we can still open these up. And you got a barrel bolt right up here. So okay. we're gonna drop that down, open it up. And oh, we didn't clean this out yet. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Hold on. So let me drop down your deep litter door. Well, here's an example of how easy it is to clean. Um, wow. Uh, uh, we're trying to make it all look clean and perfect. <laughs> So what I would do, uh, when you're ready, I would say, you know, our bales of hemp now are 44 pounds, and one bale will definitely get you off to a great start. Okay. But here's the other big announcement. Guys, I had to do it. The biggest point to the American Coop is I am trying to beat China at their own game. Best Coop for the best price. If you look at everything that goes into this, yes, I know it's not as cheap as your three, $400 chicken coffins, if you will, from Tractor Supply. But what you get is a, a flock that's gonna be successful. You're gonna have so much more enjoyable moments because your chickens aren't gonna be stressed. You're not gonna be hurting at the hip. Yeah. Um, I had to include high density polyethylene. 90% of our customers upgraded it to, it to it anyways. And we said, you know what, let's just make it standard. So we did have to raise the price a little bit, but this does come standard, all our coops. Um, I did originally try to do plywood flooring. It just wasn't enough of a savings. But here's your high density polyethylene. This is where you're gonna have your deep litter system. Here's your two six foot roost bars. So I like the one foot rule. I would never go any more than 12 standard chickens. You can go 24 bantams if you know if you cut the number in half. Okay. But eight inches is the industry standard. And I just never recommend maxing it out. However, there is a thing as chicken math. Have you ever had chickens before? <laughs> No, but I already want more. <laughs> it happens, folks. It's just, it is what it is, especially if you got the right coop. Um, so here's a nice thing. You have, you could double your flock very easily. Um, <laughs> the, the husband's over here like, oh, Matt, get out of here. I did like you for a minute. Yeah, you got to go, sir. Don't you got a flight to catch? We're going to get those sweet, the sweet girls. Yeah, the silkies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Have fun. Um, well, you know, let's talk about that. You know, silkies are sweet, well, but... Well, I thought about putting them where the girls are now. They do do so well in those smaller coops, especially mm -hmm. because the roost bars are so low. If you try to put silkies in here, they're, they're going to have trouble hopping up here. What I do with my silky customers is we put the roost bar right down here. Wow. Um, but if you mix them with other breeds, they're going to want to jump up higher. That's what they want to do to feel safer. The silkies will be down here getting crapped on. So again, I always think of that meme of the two outhouses, <laughs> management's up here, employees are down here. It's true. That's what happens. But I think it's best to keep the silkies separate. Um, now. If you want to clean your roost bars, not that you ever have to, you have these sockets. You can pop them out just like that. Again, I got to make everyone happy in the world. So I got people that clean their roost bars every single day. You shouldn't have to, but I made it easy, so no tools necessary. You got a nice chamfer cut right there, so it's rounded over. These are two and a quarter inches wide. It makes it very comfortable for all breeds of chickens, also more for our northern customers. Um, we do want to prevent frostbite, so it's mm -hmm. easy for them to cover their feet with their bellies. Definitely. Hmm. Don't think you ever have to worry about that here. No. <laughs> um, one little trick is I always like to put this end in first. It's meant to be snug and then go yeah. down that way. That way you're not rubbing against your screen. Okay. So one bale of hemp, it's going to fill up about four inches. Fit when they're sleeping at, here at night, that's going to be 50% of their defecation. Let it pile up inside here. Now here's the other thing that's going to blow you away with a deep litter system, especially using hemp. You're going to see a lot of chicken droppings. You are not going to have to add more hemp until you have the smell. Okay. You're not gonna add more or clean it out, or you shouldn't clean out just because, oh, I see a bunch of chicken crap. It's a chicken coop. Um, you will be amazed, and all our customers have done it, they call me up, they're like, Matt, 
you are right. I can't believe it. Um, so, but when you do start to see a large pile of chicken droppings, you start to smell that nitrogen smell, that ammonia smell from the chicken droppings. Then just add a layer of hemp right on top of it and start building those layers. Okay. And so no, no stirring. Just you don't have to stir. Okay. No, the chickens will do the stirring for okay. you. Um, <laughs> especially with the hemp and it'll start to break down those microbes will be introduced through their feces when they scratch at the ground and they will do their job and then when it is time to clean this is the best part um angry if you're editing maybe bring up the link again i have a video gosh maybe six years ago now our chicken girl and i we, we cleaned out a coop this size after 18 months of being used with industrial hemp no bending over pulling sweeping motion bring your wheelbarrow you got all this room back here you bring your wheelbarrow up pulling sweeping motion, put all your litter in there and then off to another compost or you can use it as mulch around a tree if you're trying to grow some trees. Um, another tip you could do is take off what's called the crust, the top layer, you know, maybe a couple inches, put that off to the side, remove the bottom part that's composted mostly and then put that crust or that top layer back in here so you're not starting over from scratch. Okay. All right. But that's all there is to it. And um, let this disappear as your litter builds up. This is my little silky ladder. These got to be here for the silky so they can get out. Here's the little perch bar for the silky so they can get up in there. Regular standard hens will have no problem at all. But again, this is all, look at that. That's just beautiful dug for yeah. pocket screwed and glued. Then go right in there. AV, get a good shot. There's the other side of the egg cush. Look at that beautiful. That is and gorgeous. again, that's going to come standard, folks. High density and everything. So that does high beautiful. density come in the egg hutches? Yes, it does. Barrel bolts right here. So what I always do is I just close it. And then uh, you got a barrel bolt right here. Close that down. And then, yeah, you can go ahead and shut that door. And there's a barrel bolt right here. And then I think we already mentioned it. Put a carabiner right there. Perfect. Perfect. We have formed a wonderful friendship with you guys since you've been here. So I feel comfortable calling you, your wife, Non, or to Anytime. answer any questions yes we are friends for life <laughs> and you know customer service is huge for us uh you, one you don't see it anymore we love it mm -hmm. and i try to teach that with all my staff and that's why it meant the world for you just to recognize you know how great these guys have been oh. um these guys are on the road non-stop just do an awesome job and it's nice that when i'm not there i can trust them to mm -hmm. do outstanding customer service so i'm glad you mentioned that and again yeah we're friends for life any questions about the coop about chickens. I have a whole arsenal of experts uh, to help answer any questions like, what can I use to clean this? Mm -hmm. And actually, that'd be a good question for Nan. Mm -hmm. She's my clean freak. So, um, I think that's it. All right. All right. Hey, guys, listen. Thank you again so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please check us out at carolinacoops.com. Check us out. If you're not already following us on Instagram, please do that. Uh, also, Facebook. I think that's getting old, but still, check us out at Facebook. Um, Twitter. I think my marketing lady does something with Twitter. I'm not really sure. But again, subscribe. Hit that bell. Wherever it is around here, hit that bell so you get notified anytime we have a video and any questions, comments. And if you're going to give me a thumbs down, that's fine. Free country. You better leave a comment down below because I want to hear why. I shoot. I, I, I want to be I want to make everyone happy, and plus I listen and learn so much from our audience out there. And another question, I know we're going to get a lot, well, where do I buy the hemp? Go to our website. You can buy through our website. You can also go on Amazon, but it'll be cheaper to buy through our website. And I think that's it. So Mary, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. It's been a we pleasure. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. And again, just give us a call if you have any questions. Okay. Guys, thanks for watching. Thank you.